Okay, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to class on children's ministry. Uh, hope you'll had a good first two hours of learning. What did you have the first two hours? The book of Galatians, Pastor. Oh, you studied the book of Galatians. Okay. Okay, so welcome to class and also uh, welcome to our e-learning students as well. Uh, uh, just glad that you all are part of our class. Uh, before we begin, can one of you please lead us in prayer, please? Anyone? Kung, can you lead us in prayer? Yes, Thank you. Okay. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you uh, for this morning. Um, thank you that uh, we're going to learn uh, more about you. And God, we thank you for your, uh, uh, for Pastor uh, here. Um, I pray that you would just uh, continue to uh Lead, uh, lead her as uh, she leads us and uh, uh, shares your uh, word and insight with us, God. Um, thank you that we would uh, not just hear your words, but that we would apply it in our lives and uh, um, learn. And um, yeah, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Kung. Uh, so last uh, class on Monday, we uh, were looking at the uh, essential foundations for all church-based uh, ministry to children. Um, we looked at the real essentials in Christian ministry. Uh, I said there are four, but sorry, there's uh, stand corrected. There's five essential foundations. Uh, we looked at the first one was children's ministry must be God-centered. The second one, uh, we saw that uh, children's ministry must be Bible-saturated. Uh, the third one uh, we looked at was children's ministry must be gospel-given. And uh, we stopped at uh, the fourth point where we looked at uh, children's ministry must minister uh, to the whole uh, family. Okay, so, you know, we know that uh, parents... Uh, are called by God uh, and they're, uh, you know, given this precious gift of children. They're blessed with children. It's God's gift to them. Uh, but they're also uh, uh, called by God to be the primary faith nurturers of their children. They are the ones who have to nurture them in their faith, in their walk with God, uh, train them in righteousness and holiness and godly living. Uh, so even as, uh, uh, you know, children's church ministers, even as some of us who are in children's ministry, even as we minister to children, uh, you know, uh, it's also a responsibility to partner with parents in assisting them, uh, in fulfilling uh, their call, just helping them, supporting them, uh, working along with them uh, in the areas of challenges that they face with their children, just also helping so that we can raise up um, uh, you know, children who love the Lord, who are walking in His ways, and who are grounded in uh, His truths. Okay, so it's it's important that uh, we just not serve children, but also uh, we need to know that children's ministry is also uh, serving their parents as uh, well. So, how do we go about doing this? Any ideas? Any thoughts you all have? How can we go about doing this? How can uh, children's ministry? children's ministers uh, minister to the whole family. Of course, we, we saw how we can minister to children, uh, to parents specifically. Any thoughts, any ideas? No thoughts? So, how sorry, can... Sorry, Pastor. Did you see how can parents minister to their children's effect? Children effectively is that what you said? Uh, 
uh, no, say, I'm, I was saying that, you know, as children's ministers, as children's church, uh, uh, the children's ministry uh, also must minister to the whole family. That's not just minister to children, but also it means serving, ministering, working alongside with the parents. So how can a children's ministry and how can children's ministers, uh, you know, also minister to parents as well? Oh, okay. Um, I, I think one way to go about that is have a program whereby you have both parents and children just a program it could be a day or two where you sit with them and um, you just talk to them on what their responsibilities are in ensuring that they follow up with whatever they're being taught and then there could be also special programs for parents alone whereby we're 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 parents are being reminded again of their responsibility to ensure that they are they are preaching to the children they're talking to them about the gospel and it's not just leaving it to the children ministers alone and then the church itself has to ensure that they're rightly equipping parents because it's whatever the parents are being taught on an adult level that's the only that's what they'll be able to take home so they must be adequately equipped so that they can actually uh, teach the word of God, teach the truth that the children need to know. So I think this this way, I think that's a way children ministry can also minister to the parents. That's my own thought. Thank you, Say. So equipping the parents, also having sessions where uh, combined sessions with the children and parents on issues, uh, that they are facing challenges that they are facing have sessions along with them have separate sessions for parents where they are uh, helped with those uh, present uh, uh, you know uh, challenges that teens or children different age groups uh, uh, age specific uh, session related uh, for parents how to minister to their children yes uh, we could do that as well uh, um, Kennedy says, showing compassion and being interactive. Okay. Uh, Shri Kumar, counseling parents. Uh, Kennedy again says, formulating teaching material by a pastoral team. Okay. Helping and supporting them and encouraging them. Okay. Yeah, basically, it's asking how can you help, support, and uh, encourage? Uh, what are some of the things that we could do? Avni says, by being inclusive, keeping them well informed, connecting with them time to time. Uh, be on one uh, be to be on uh, one page regarding what the children are going through or learning in children's church okay thank you yes um yeah all good answers so we need to uh, basically let the parents know what the children are learning uh in uh, children's church or in sunday school so basically like we have a parent teacher meeting in schools you can have parent teacher meeting the beginning of the year at the end of uh, uh, the year you know you could have it for children who are attending children's church so you can tell parents the topics the programs you've planned and what is how they can contribute what they should do how they can journey along with us alongside uh, and helping children uh, so they're aware of things um, also you know uh, uh, what are the take-home activities uh, you know uh, one thing that we do in our children's church is um, have um, a, a whatsapp group for each class where the parent is you know after the class in the whatsapp group informed what the child has been taught that week uh, just a, uh, one or two liner about what has been taught and um, what is the application of course the general application that is uh, mentioned there uh, you know like the children learned that uh, they need to honor god in this area or they need to obey god in this area or they learned about uh, faith so how they can apply uh, faith uh, using the word of god how they can apply faith in difficult situations so whatever it is you know just a liner and then also uh, uh you know making sure the parents know that the children have a workbook where they have written or they have a notebook where they have written how you know uh, what they have learned how it applies to them in their specific area and what they are going to do because you know a uh, faith uh if you teach a topic you know about uh, how we can use uh, declare god's word if you're teaching them about the word of god and uh, teaching them how to declare the promises in god's word so what are the challenges you're facing what are the promises you're going to declare 
the challenges each child uh, can face is uh, different from another child. So they will write their uh, uh, specific challenges and the promises and what they're going to, you know, uh, 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 say uh, how they are going to use that promise. So the parents uh, can know by just looking at the child's book and help the parent, uh, you know, uh, the, ask the parent to help. So the parent also is okay uh, learning from the child uh, and also have, by helping the child the parent is also you know using uh, uh, that promise or learning that hey i can speak god's word over my challenges in case they've forgotten they're facing a challenge they are going to some difficulty it just can help both the parent and the child uh, so application um, is happening throughout the week the parent is reminding the child how to apply to do it uh, so that is very important in uh, our christian lives because we hear so much but uh, very little done in translating that word into action applying it so we're teaching our children at a very young age and we're getting parents to you know follow up be part of that uh, learning process as well also learning uh, help uh, getting the parent to teach the child the memory verse in turn the parent also learns scripture the child is also learning uh, and god's word is powerful it just speaks a uh, bible quiz you know getting the parents involved in various activities where uh, uh, you know they're preparing their children as well so you know, when and also uh, another thing that we can uh, do is mentoring um, you know when we uh, uh, you know we have this whole concept of uh, we had this concept of mentoring in our children's church you know where um, uh, uh, in a class, if there are four children and there are two teachers, then each of them divides uh, children. So each of them take two, two children. Uh, they pray for them during the week. Uh, you know, they call them up during the week, just say, hey, how's life? What What's going on in school, at home? Uh, and also connect with their parents. Uh, you know, uh, ask the parents, uh, is there any challenges, difficulties that the child is going through so that they can work along with them, uh, you know, help the child. Uh, so mentoring is also a beautiful way that you can help the parent and the child counseling uh, you know if they're going through any challenges they're facing difficulties and other uh, wonderful things so uh, you know you can keep all of these things in mind even as uh, you would like to implement that in your children's church or Sunday school or you can give these ideas to the children's church workers in your um, uh, children's church uh, the last uh, uh, real essential that uh, we need uh, in children's ministry or uh, the fifth essential foundations for all children's based ministry uh, the fifth one is that children's ministry is about serving kids uh, it's all about serving kids it's all about um, you know uh, uh, working to help uh, serve kids it's putting their needs their spiritual needs uh, before our own uh, which means that i'm not saying that you know uh uh, you know, we are not looking for our own spiritual growth. That's very important. Uh, if our spiritual growth is, uh, you know, is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, you know, not, uh, we are not growing spiritually. If it's stagnant, uh, you know, we are not spiritually receiving anything, then, uh, and it's stale, then all that we are giving to children is something that is stale, it will be boring, they are not listening, they will not listen to us. Uh, and if it if we are stagnant in our uh, relationship, you know, we can't give anything that is useful, life changing, life transforming uh, to the children because we ourselves are not receiving. Uh, so it's important for us to have a deep, intimate relationship uh, with God because out of that intimacy, you know, flows a powerful ministry. Out of that intimacy, we can uh, basically, you know, uh, give into children's uh, uh, life. So it's important, uh, you know, but to put their needs before us. In that sense, what I'm saying is, uh, or their spiritual needs before us is, you know, sometimes we feel, hey, I had a busy week, I had a rough week, I had a difficult week. So I'll just call up and say, I cannot sign, uh, you know, I cannot come and take my class today, though I'm, it's my uh, turn this week. Or you can't say, hey, I'm going through these challenges. Uh, I feel unworthy to teach. Um, 
oh, you know, um, I'm spiritually feeling very drained. Uh, I'm going through these challenges, these struggles. Yes, we all go through it. You know, we all face these things. But that does not, uh, uh, you know, uh, give us an opportunity where we, we say, hey, I'm not going to go and, you know, teach, even though it's my turn this Sunday or I've committed myself to teach in children's church. What we need to do is we need to get before God, you know, kneel before God or get into the presence of God and deal with our issues, deal with our challenges, ask God's grace and mercy. We can't say, you know, this week was a very tiring week. I had a very busy week at uh, office. I didn't have uh, time to prepare and hence I'm not going to teach or maybe it can be one off thing but you know if you do it on a consistent regular basis basis is going to be very difficult so what we're saying is you know we need to handle our lives uh, and you know uh, uh, put our priorities right uh, check ourselves keep ourselves uh, in constant fellowship and communion with the holy spirit growing intimately uh, so that even as we've committed to ministering to children you know we put their needs their concerns um, uh, you know, put them also, put ministering in children's church in our order of priority as top uh, in get, setting aside time to prepare, not saying, oh, they are children. Uh, okay, what is today's lesson? Oh, it's about uh, blind man, Bartimaeus. Uh, I know the story. I'll just go tell it to them. Uh, that's not uh, the attitude. But, you know, uh, it's important that... Um, you know, we uh, when we stay, com we, we we have we commit to children's church. You know, uh, you you commit wholly, and uh, you know, prepare yourselves, prepare the lessons well, not preparing the last moment. Uh, also important as uh, if you're if you're a Sunday school or children's church director or the pastor leading it, ensure that you have committed people on your team. Pray and ask God to lead you to the right committed people. Uh, also important that you plan. And uh, the entire year, you know, what are what is the curriculum? What are the topics you're going to teach? Uh, what are the different activities that you're going to have throughout the year, uh, which is catering to your vision that you have? Maybe vision for that specific year. You you have a broader vision, but you've kind of broken it down uh, for the each year for this year. What is part of the vision that you are trying to fulfill? What God is leading you to. So, what are the activities that you can have? Uh, or what are the field trips, evangelistic trips that you are going to uh, get your children to do? Uh, you know, just planning ahead of time gives more clarity. Just helps. Uh, also align yourselves, all of these activities, the curriculum, everything that you're doing uh, to the topics. Uh, divide your Sundays like I remember, you know, dividing the Sundays like one week where we had uh, worship and then we have games time. Uh, or the first Sunday we had worship, then um, we had a time where, uh, uh, you know, fully communion and then classes. Then another week we just had, you know, uh, 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 worship and, and games just for children to relate with each other, interact, uh, uh, maybe something also that can become, bring about learning after the game. And then they had class time. Sometimes, you know, we just had... Uh, 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 worship short time of worship we had something called the kingdom builders club which i'll explain in a bit and then you know uh, uh, get them to move into their uh, classes so you know just different uh, 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 programs different activities that you bring in uh, where children are excited to come to children's church they are also excited to learn uh, be part and also all of these activities which is uh, you know uh, catering to the vision through the topics that you are teaching and, uh, you know, getting them to grow in their faith, in their walk with God, and also to, uh, you know, uh, flow in the gifts of the Spirit, uh, utilize the, the talents that God has uh, given to them. Also use creative uh, methods of teaching, not just using, uh, you know, uh, the ancient method of just uh, talking to them, uh, but you know, get them to enact the skits, use uh, some props. Uh, we look at that when we are studying how to uh, write a lesson plan, or how to teach uh, using creative methods. Uh, but just like to show you, you know, uh, we recently did uh, uh, this topic, the Word of God uh, in Children's Church. Uh, so our lesson one, you know, uh, was talking about uh, uh, what is the Word, uh, what is the Word of God. So we had this. Uh, PowerPoint. I hope you're able to see it. Okay, so just prepare this uh, PowerPoint, you know, uh, 
I'll just run through it very quickly. Uh, so, what is the Bible? So it's just not text, but uh, just going down uh, through the you know some of these uh, uh, slides. I'm not going to show you everything, but just a couple of them. Uh, you know, it's not just text, but also we, uh, you know, have these pictures where we, we were talking about, uh, uh, you know, about young Samuel, how he hears God's voice, you know, so we have all of these pictures. So, and then again, we have some uh, passages and then again, you know, uh, about uh, uh, the story that we are telling them. So if you don't have uh, pictures that you can show them physically, uh, you can just get all of this on the internet and then create a, a, a PowerPoint, a slide, and, uh, you know, show it uh, to the kids. It just uh, basically uh, helps them to uh, see and learn uh, because, um, you know, children learn not just by hearing but also by seeing uh, and by um, doing, okay, which we will learn more later in uh, in detail when we do about lesson plan. So use creative methods to teach them. There are many creative things. You can even show them a video, but be careful where you're taking the video from because many of the videos uh, that are there are from uh, cult groups, uh, you know, uh, so you need to look at the videos, see that if the story is aligning itself to what is the, the narrative is the same as the narrative in the Bible. Also, you know, have uh, organized activities and programs that would build them up in the word of God, uh, in evangelism, in their faith walk, basically nurturing themselves, uh, nurturing children in the ways of the Lord. So, you know, uh, we have a couple of programs, uh, uh, like, you know, for example, uh, we were teaching them on the Holy Spirit, uh, and also one of the lessons was on the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, so we had a, a potluck breakfast uh, and all the children were asked to bring uh, a snack or a breakfast dish that uh, contains a fruit or a couple of fruits, and then they had to connect it to the fruit of the spirit. So, for example, if a child brings an apple pie, uh, you know, the child has just basically share two minutes with their class uh, what snack they brought for breakfast uh, and what is the fruit and uh, how it connects with the fruit of the spirit. So, for example, if a child gets an apple pie, the child mentions I brought an apple pie because apple, uh, uh, you know, represents goodness and apple uh, uh, is just so good to eat. It's good for health. Uh, and uh, same way, you know, uh, 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 the fruit of spirit, goodness, you know, God is perfectly good and he wants us also to be good. Uh, so when we choose uh, to do good things, the right things, uh, in a way we're telling God that we love him and, uh, you know, we can ask God and pray and ask him to help us to be good and to obey him at all times. Uh, this is how the fruit of the spirit uh, called goodness grows in our lives. So the Holy Spirit helps us to grow in the area of goodness. So uh, just a, a very creative way that, uh, you know, you could uh, get children uh, to learn. Uh, another way that... Uh, Oh, you know, oh, we do activities is, uh, you know, uh, for example, um, uh, for Christmas, when we have Christmas parties, uh, children's church Christmas party, uh, we just don't have a good time where children are singing and dancing and having some games and good eats and then, you know, uh, getting gifts or exchanging gifts with each other. Uh, we have uh, uh, an activity where we get children to learn something from that activity. So one year we had them, uh, uh, you know, pick up uh, a character from the, <clears throat> sorry, pick up a character from the genealogy of Jesus and, uh, you know, uh, enact a scene from uh, uh, in that character's life. And they're not supposed to, uh, you know, do everything is a mime. They're not supposed to use any words, just act it out. And the rest of the children, after they enact it, you know, the rest of the other children have to guess which character it is. So it's exciting. All of them are watching, listening. Um, so they pick out these characters and uh, children are then afterwards, you know, once one of them in, in the class uh, has to uh, narrate the incident, how this character is connected to the genealogy of Jesus and uh, what is that character's contribution in the Bible? Another time we had um, the names of God where uh, children had to uh, pick up a name of God. Uh, where is it mentioned in the Bible and enact the, the scene where the name was mentioned first. Uh, so they're learning 
the names of God. They're learning the meaning of that name. Uh, they're also learning where in the Bible it's mentioned. Uh, and each class, you know, enacts it. They get they uh, they they use their own creativity, uh, and they do it. So even once we had uh, the fruit of the spirit, you know, uh, where they had to uh, use their talents. Uh, to uh, you know, uh, uh, show forth the fruit of the spirit, or uh, which ascribes to uh, the fruit of the spirit. So, sing a song, or paint, or write a poem, or story, anything that uh, you know would uh, uh, teach them, or talks about the fruit of the spirit. So, very creative ways of activities and programs, not just to entertain uh, ch children. Children's church is not just all about fun and entertainment of just coloring and video games and uh, showing them videos and having games for them but it's teaching them deeper truths and how they can use all of these things uh, through their talents just through food uh, just through various activities uh, just helping them in their learning uh, process and I, another thing that we uh, do is mentoring children uh, which we which i mentioned you know um, each uh, uh, children's church minister divides themselves uh, the children in their uh, their class uh, prays for them uh, speaks speak to them after child after church is over just gather some information how life is or maybe call them during the week pray with them if they're having test exams also connect with their parents to know what challenges they're going through so that they can help their child out so the parent knows okay this is my this is my children's church uh, 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 teacher uh, my 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 child's children's church teacher and how uh, you know uh, if I have any problem they can call back they can uh, relate with them how they can or just need prayer support you know they can reach out for help and also you know it just helps in um, in getting uh, not just teaching the children but just engaging with them in a holistic way uh, bringing about a holistic learning experience helping the child in a holistic way as well praying for them knowing their needs their behavioral issues and just helping them out another thing that we began uh is uh you know something called uh, the kingdom builders club uh so just i started this kingdom builders club where we had children uh, sign up for any one of these things singing art and craft healing and deliverance evangelism dance and choreography and memorizing and oratory uh so you know if they love singing they would join the the Kingdom Builders Club of singing. If they were good at art and painting, uh, they would join that club. Uh, if they wanted to know about more about healing and deliverance, praying for people for healing and deliverance, children join that club. Evangelism, how to share the faith, dance and choreography, those who are interested in dance, and then memorizing and oratory, those children who like to memorize scripture, would like to speak or preach, teach scripture. So, you know, just building up building them up with a very young age to identify their skills their talents how to use it and the amazing thing is i just thought we put them here and you know teach them some skills uh, one of your classmates uh, tarun uh, was uh, you know also uh, teaching children he was uh, part of the kingdom builders club uh, he was teaching the memorizing and oratory uh, class for the kingdom builders did a wonderful job thank you tarun again uh, and uh, you know, uh, it's not just to, uh, you know, give them uh, some way that they find out their talents and skills, but in a, in, a, in a very wonderful way, God brought about the supernatural into this. God was telling me, you know, uh, uh, you know, through singing, uh, get the children to sing over uh, people who they are ministering to and re release supernatural words, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, even as they sing over them, sing the right song that God wants to sing, that will bring healing, deliverance, and wholeness the same way with art and craft even as they're painting you know just ask god uh, who is this painting for uh, what is uh, he uh, trying to say through this painting the word of wisdom and knowledge of prophecy healing that he's bringing about then give it to that uh, person and uh, just minister to them healing and deliverance they went through uh, that whole book or uh, 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 the pastor's book on um uh, healing and deliverance, which you had learned in your second year, I think. Uh, evangelism, also they were trained. Dance and choreography, just not to dance, but how to release a supernatural. So even as they dance, you know, people who are watching it can just, you know, healing can be released, deliverance, wholeness, 
uh, uh, and also memorizing and oratory skills, how to speak the right word to whom, how to preach and teach. And the end of the year, you know, I think after the end of two years, uh, our children uh, uh, led worship. They conducted the entire worship service. It was so powerful. Uh, each of these uh, teams uh, came up, did their jobs, and it was just wonderful how children were painting, how beautifully, powerfully they led a worship uh, you know, painted and then declared uh, the word that God had given for them, who it was for. So the person came and collected the painting. Then we had our healing and deliverance children, the end of the service, come and stand up in front, uh, just uh, pray for the adults who came up in front for prayer. Uh, it was just a powerful uh, thing. So you could also, you know, like to take this up and do it in your Sunday schools or in your children's church. It's just powerful uh, to help children just not identify their skills and talents, but also how to uh, you know release uh, the supernatural uh, through all of this is just uh, so powerful okay so this is how we could uh, go about doing children's ministry about serving kids ministering to them training them up teaching them at a very young age uh, so that when they leave children's church you know they will be like a bible college student that was our own uh, uh, initiative of writing all of these bible college courses uh, uh, for children uh, children's church curriculum uh, our whole idea was that when children leave children's church you know and they go into adult church uh, you know uh, they would be able to, ready to minister uh, uh, able to understand uh, the deeper and the greater things that God is teaching and preaching uh, to them from the pulpit uh, every Sunday. So these are the five essentials of uh, children's ministry. Anyone has any questions? How would uh, formulate a teaching program for multicultural Sunday school, which is ethically unbalanced? Uh, Yes, Kennedy. So uh, even if people are coming from different uh, tribes and different races and cultures, uh, or even different uh, uh, social backgrounds, the Word of God really uh, ministers to um, uh, everyone in their specific, uh, you know, uh, uh, cultures, or you know, it just ministers to their spirit being. Uh, you know, we are all created body, soul, and spirit. It just, it just beautifully translates, relates. Uh, so we don't have to worry about uh, that. But of course, you know, you could use uh, all of the programs to even uh, help children to bring about their own cultural, uh, uh, you know, their own cultures, their own way of doing things uh, uh, in the in the programs, in the activities, so that uh, other children can learn other people children's cultures and just know that you know, God loves everyone from every culture and how uh, uh, it's so beautiful that you know you have children from different uh, uh, you know uh, 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 backgrounds different cultures uh, just to know how we all beautifully can worship together and how it will be in heaven heaven will be like this you know uh, uh, so it's just beautiful yes just to learn uh, just for children to also learn from other cultures you never know uh, you know uh, children will make friends with uh, you know uh, children from other uh, countries and uh, god can use that uh, you know burden their hearts to go to that country and be a uh, uh, missionary or an evangelist a pastor or a teacher you know it has happened in the past uh, so uh, you know and uh, when they go it will not just be a totally new culture because they have a friend uh, who is uh, uh, you know, part of that culture. So I, I just watched a, a Christian movie uh, uh, where, uh, you know, because of the uh, uh, a family living in a war-torn country, they moved to America. And when they moved to America, uh, they started uh, 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 like an NGO for all of these uh, uh, people who are from war-torn war -torn, uh, countries, especially basically from their own country. But they had other people from other cultures and there was this American family who was very close to this family who had come from this war-torn country and uh, finally you know their uh, daughter went back to this war-torn country to be a missionary and uh, you know to minister there so 
it's it's just so wonderful because at the very young age uh, both these families who were you know uh, from different uh, race from different nations uh, but good family friends uh, but the children were going through different things because one had come from a war torn country had seen totally uh, uh, you know a different side of life very painful uh, uh, life the child from america was abused uh, but this child was able to re- these two children were able to relate because of their uh, you know uh, the backgrounds that they come from the difficult background they were able to relate and became very good friends and uh, this 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 child from america grew up and went back to this country for, from where this family had come and a minister there so yes it can just be uh, a wonderful thing but the word of god uh, curriculum all can relate to children from different uh, cultural backgrounds uh, can you know but you need to just be sensitive how the kind of um, language you're using the kind of examples that you're using as well does that help kennedy yes yes thank thank you because we've had a such a problem in our place because it's a okay. multicultural cultural players kids who come from different countries and they speak different language language they have been brought up separate separately mm-hmm. but thanks when they come come together becomes an issue. Yes. <laughs> Good to hear from you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Let's just make sure that, uh, you know, that uh, children don't, cli- uh, you know, uh, get into their, their own cliques, their own groups. So we have children from uh, one nation who become a, a, a group, they sit together, they relate together, they don't speak to others. But it's good to get children to mix with others. Uh, uh, engage them in activities where they're learning from each other, engaging with each other. If they get into their own cliques, then there can be a division, there can be uh, a racial division as well. But just learn, uh, teach them from the Word of God to love others, how they can uh, accept people from different nations, their cultures, learn from them. It's, it's, it's wonderful, it's beautiful. Yes. Any other questions anyone else has? No questions? Okay, if there are no questions, then we will move on to uh, the next lesson where we'll be talking about uh, the developmental uh, needs of uh, children. Uh, We would uh, look at, uh, you know, uh, the developmental needs of, uh, uh, you know, children in specific ages, so uh, age-related developmental needs. But before we look at uh, the specific age-related developmental needs of children, uh, we would also, uh, we just generally look at the basic uh, developmental needs common to all children. And you must be wondering, why should we study the developmental needs of children? Uh, Because when, uh, why do you think we need to study the developmental needs of children as uh, children's church ministers or those who are in children's ministry? What is the importance of the developmental needs of children? Why should we know it? Why should we study it? Any thoughts? Hello, anyone in class? Any thoughts on this? Why do we need to study the developmental needs of children? In the context of church. I think um, just to help to help group them, them to know how to familiar from what to teach to teach them. And uh, also just so just for hygiene public purposes just yeah yeah okay uh yes the, uh, it, it just helps us better to teach them also put them into specific age related groups uh, have activities specifically for them uh yes hygiene as well thank you uh kennedy elisha so that we can meet the needs at each developmental stage yes very important thank you elisha yes go ahead taisha i was gonna say um similar in order to cater to them better, to plan prepare for them, um, to cater to their needs, I guess, better. So that's basically echoing what the others have said. 
Thank you, Taisha. So it's uh, basically to cater to their uh, needs in their specific uh, ages. Yes. Uh, so all of these things are very important. Uh, this developmental needs is important for us to know so that, you know, uh, we'll be able to write out the lesson plan, uh, plan the topics for uh, the curriculum for uh, uh, the children, uh, uh, write uh, lesson plans specifically for that specific uh, uh, age group, uh, also organize activities, uh, you know, or, uh, programs that they can do, which can, uh, which will help them according to, and what will cater to their uh, needs, what will help them in their specific area of needs and challenges uh, that uh, they are um, facing okay uh, so all of this can also help us as teachers to prepare uh, our lessons to communicate rightly to teach rightly also when we are counseling and mentoring children it's important for us to know their developmental needs it just gives us a wide a wider perspective to know why they're behaving like this also having activities uh, the right kind of activities that would uh, would engage them uh, would be exciting for them and not uh, kind of put them off or be boring uh, you know so age related activities craft whether it's car craft games examples that you're using um, so uh, it's important uh, to know the developmental needs which will help us to minister to them uh, better so we look at uh, uh, you know uh, the developmental needs that is common uh, to all children uh, let me just uh, Put up that slide. Okay. Just give me a minute. Uh, Are you able to see it? Yes, ma'am. OK. OK, the developmental needs of uh, that are common to all um, uh, children. The first one is the need for uh, physical activity. Uh, children need to exercise and uh, children at all age groups need to exercise and develop their growing bodies uh, through physical activities that is you know uh, develop uh, both their larger and small uh, smaller muscles and motor skills so uh, basically the large motor skills concerns their developmental uh, development of their large uh, larger muscle movements that are responsible for running and jumping and throwing uh, hopping and balancing on one foot uh, so when you are uh, having activities for children you know uh, don't do something that is they just have to sit down and just watch or something that's a, a mental exercise like a, a mental quiz but have activities which uh, you know gets them to uh, uh, you know, to use their, uh, uh, the, their large muscles, the movement of their large muscles, which is running, jumping, throwing, uh, hopping, balancing on one foot. Uh, so those are the large motor skills. The smaller motor skills are responsible for grasping things, holding, whether it's a pen, pencil, cutting, doing craft activity. So, uh, you know, in uh, at children's church or your Sunday school time, include games that would, uh, you know, um, uh, help the children exercise and develop and grow their, uh, you know, uh, grow them, help them in growing the, uh, through the physical activities uh, of using both their large motor skills and also have some activities like, uh, you know, drawing, coloring, uh, some craft, some activity that will help them to use their small motor skills, which is basically cutting and sticking or, you know, using the pen or pencil, holding, grasping, that are, uh, which are the smaller motor skills. And, uh, you know, uh, children enjoy games, they enjoy craft, they enjoy activity, uh, you know, uh, even older children, 
you'll be surprised, you know, uh, usually we think that teens uh, would not like uh, doing something with a, a craft activity. I, sp I thought that and, you know, specifically I thought boys will not uh, enjoy it. But I was quite surprised when we had our, our vacation Bible school, you know, just to see how uh, actively engaged um, teenagers were, uh, grade 8, 9, 10, in, uh, in, in cutting and sticking and, you know, engaging in, in craft activity as well. So the first thing is uh, that is common to all the developmental need is the need for physical activity. So ensure that there is some kind of physical activity movement. Even a physical activity can mean, you know, when children are singing, can do action songs, they can sing, uh, they can stand up during a uh, worship time. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, that will help them use their large motor skills and also have activities that will help them use their small uh, motor skills. The second one is uh, the need for competence and achievement. Uh, it's common uh, for many children, uh, you know, uh, and also for the young adolescents, the young teenagers uh, who feel very self-conscious uh, self -conscious and uh, they're unsure of their talents and abilities. Uh, you know, they need a, a space, they need opportunities uh, where, uh, you know, that will pr help them prove their competence, uh, what they're good at, uh, also to, uh, you know, celebrate over their small achievements that they do, whether it's a craft, uh, whether it's a game that they won together as a group, or whether it's some uh, a Bible quiz they, they answered, you know, so we need to create opportunities uh, for them to explore uh, you know, uh, a wide variety of experiences and interests uh, to use their talent. So have all of these great opportunities uh, uh, for them to explore uh, a wide varieties of uh, experiences and interests where they can use their talents. Uh, you know, uh, they need these opportunities uh, to demonstrate themselves, to show themselves, basically to know what they're good at, uh, the areas of their talent, uh, or, or, you know, just celebrating uh, a small win, a small achievement uh, that will help them build their self-esteem, uh, get them to value themselves, look at themselves as important, um, and also for others to appreciate, hey, this person is skill talented in this area you know give them opportunities in that area uh, and also give them opportunities uh, you know uh, and help them uh, to know that hey you can do well you know you can uh, excel in this uh, uh, you are good at it and you can improvise on this uh, uh, talent and which they will really appreciate which they will really like and uh, you know it's a place where they're also uh, learning to uh, uh, know who they are in Christ uh, build a good healthy self-image uh, and also have a good healthy self-value knowing that God has given them talents and is going to use their talents and utilizing their talents uh, you know and how they can use their talents also not just to boast about themselves but also how they can use their talents to help others so like when we had this kingdom builders club you know we had children uh, presenting their talents uh, yes everybody was appreciating uh, them uh, and all of that so uh, but also you know uh, children are able to see that hey to this talent is not just for me to boast about it uh, to present it or to just perform on stage but through this talent God is trying to release the supernatural so how can I use the gift of the gifts of the spirit to release the supernatural to this talent so we're basically getting them to in a higher place in the in the world uh, people um, are using that talents just to showcase it just to get appreciation uh, to be clapped at uh, you know to be applauded uh, uh, you know uh, to prove their self-worth but here we're teaching children that it's it goes beyond what the world sees it, it goes beyond to using your talent uh, to minister to people to bring a word of encouragement healing restoration deliverance uh, uh, and to release the supernatural and uh, to minister to people by using uh, the gifts of the uh, spirit so at apc we create opportunities to opportunities for children to use their talents uh, we provide them opportunities to explore their talents as well uh, i i mentioned about the kingdom builders club 
um, we also had a time when uh, we had, you know, during our uh, uh, general session where we had worship and announcements and collected the offer offering, uh, we had children who are part of the worship team, children who played um, instruments, uh, who led worship, uh, you know, children who would do the declaration. So they would come and lead the other children in doing the declaration. Uh, we had uh, different children on different Sundays pray for the offering. Some children would help in, um, uh, you know, projecting the PowerPoints for worship. Uh, some of them would help us in pack up, uh, packing up all the things. So they would also learn a sound system. What are the cables that are required for what, uh, you know, pack up, set up. Uh, also, when, uh, you know, uh, children used to pray for others and there's a need, we would ask children to pray. So children are just not learning to come to children's church to be ministered to, but they're also learning, uh, you know, uh, how to they can minister to other children, give, give them the uh, confidence, uh, you know, uh, help them in their competency and also know that they can achieve things, they can do things for God and how God can uh, use them uh, my Italy. Uh, also, you know, we have skits where we get children to enact a Bible quiz. Um, we have something called a Bible match, uh, which we, uh, you know, we had two times uh, when I was uh, overseeing Children's Church uh, between the Bible boys and the gospel girls. Uh, we had different, uh, uh, you know, ways where they could answer Bible uh, the questions from the Bible. Uh, so just having the Bible match. Uh, at kids conference uh, or our, uh, you know VBS uh, vacation Bible school uh, we have talent competitions uh, singing painting dancing um, uh, poetry writing you know just memorizing scripture whatever so we we'll use all of these uh, and organize these programs uh, different programs so that children can use their talents they can know what their talents are uh, and they can feel that uh, the, they're competent enough to do it and they can achieve things and how God enables them and uh, helps them. Okay, we'll stop here. Um, any questions anyone has? We'll continue with the developmental needs that are common for all um, age groups uh, next, uh, next class. But any questions anyone has? No questions? Yes, Asha says that it improves their character and their lifestyle as well. Yes. Okay. Okay. If there's no questions, we'll end class. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining class. Have a, a blessed day and, uh, and have a blessed week, uh, the rest of the week. Thank you all. God bless.